Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Finally, baby, we're back. We're making videos about computer CPUs, computer processing units on the internet. On the internet. Hi, we're back. Finally. We got an amazing little piece of kit for you here. We're talking Boom X79. Finally on the platform. A very relevant. Oh my god, you saw the name of the freaking video. And I got my 1080 Ti decked out with a water cooler, Noctua fans. Uh, it just, it's a crazy situation. There's a back plate on it for extra cooling. It's maxed out to the nines. And we've even got. Oh, bah, 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 bah. oh it's, it's running. So let's talk about some things, okay? As you saw by the title, I think it's better than Ryzen. Sort of. Kinda. Not really. But sorta. Uh, right now we're in Time Spy. We're running uh, 480, 490 from the wall, okay? I don't know if you can see that. 490 from the wall, okay? And, uh, oh yeah, there we go. And that's high. It's not actually that bad. I mean, I had a crazy dual GPU solution on the bench the other day that uh, Voodoo computer and it was running like over 800 so it's not like that and there's eight cores in this thing okay this is a Xeon uh, 1680 version 2 eight core processor overclocked over over overclocked with an AIO on my test bench to 4.66 6 gigahertz I had it up to 6.5 it's about as far as it'll go at least with that cooling solution and the mother freaking craziest motherboard you've ever it's got a Gatling gun it's right there it's got a freaking bullets for it's it's insane it's the MSI X power uh, 2 okay big bang and it's uh, got a 20 phase VRM on it it's absolutely nuts and you could do like a billion SLI on it because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, you could probably only do three, but still, you get the idea. You can do lots of things with this thing. Pretty cool motherboard. So, why do I think X79 is so relevant? Well, I'm just playing Time Spy here just to get to show you the power consumption. That's well, I already ran all the benchmarks, so don't you worry about that, little Billy. Um, but very, 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 very relevant. Uh, and you have to be savvy. Okay, because there is some potential for this with the right CPU to be better than Ryzen. And that by that I mean better in games specifically. Okay, this still will get trumped by my 2700X when it comes to uh, uh, multi core performance in like very core heavy workloads. But I was very surprised to find out, and we'll run Cinebench as soon as this is done. I already got some results, anyways, but that this thing. Uh, you know, it gets chomped on by like 300 points. So by like 15 to 20 percent over my uh, eight core equivalent AMD friend over here. Okay, and this is an old platform. I mean, this motherboard came out like five years ago. So we're talking old, but this is from the days when Intel would actually let you put their Xeons uh, in some consumer grade motherboards for some damning amazing results. And these CPUs, as we'll see in a second, aren't too shabby my friends aren't too shabby so we've got a uh time spy result here she's loading up of 10,403 that is not freaking bad so you're here for the the gaming uh we'll get to that in a minute okay i gotta click bait you talk you through you know i gotta talk i gotta make the video 10 minutes long so i make my money right <laughs> well no, let's run cinebench we'll run the cinebench so what do you think it'll do? And I got the temps under control. It's actually not really, the, the temps aren't the problem. I just really hit the wall. And that's probably because this Xeon is soldered onto the, you know, just like a Ryzen would be. There's no crazy crap Tim in there to be getting in the way. So we'll launch hardware monitor there too. We'll do a little Cinebench run. And this is not optimum performance. I've gone a little further than this will show, but I, I love running Cinebench on fast computers because it just gives me like, you know, maybe 30 seconds at most to blather to y'all while I'm making it happen. But uh, yeah, it's the 1680 version 2, and uh, we'll show you in a second how you can tell which Xeons will work in these platforms too. And if you want to get into this, I'm actually, this opened my eyes. I wouldn't have considered this as a main workforce. 1651! That's 1700 performance. That's better than Ryzen 1700 stock performance. It's about 1800x performance. 
This is in a little bit different of a league. Okay, this I, you've seen it. I almost did 2,000. Well, I did 2,000, but it'll do like 19, 20, you know, uh, overclocked 4.3 gigahertz all day long. And I've got 64 gigs of some mixed memory in here. You might get mad at me, but I mixed some Dominator and some Predator RAM to get 64 gigs of uh, 1,600 megahertz memory. I didn't overclock the memory. It's running at uh, uh, CL10, so it's it's pretty good pretty good stuff i just had two giant sets of ram i thought it'd be funny to plug them all in there and it worked you know once i i loaded the xmp profile for the one ram and when i put all the rest in there it just was fine it was happy they must be kind of a similar chips or something like that so 1651 keeping in mind that horizon 1700 overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz probably gets 1700 and uh if you're really lucky with like an 1800x and get it near four gigahertz it'll it'll do like 1800 almost so it's a pretty damn good uh platform considering you can put ecc memory in this that's one of the best things you can do with this is if you want to buy this platform this x79 you can go find some server memory some ddr3 plug it in here and it will work and it will be very much cheaper than buying some crazy DDR3, uh, you know, uh, you know, the new or used off eBay that's got the crazy heat sinks and stuff on it, and it'll perform virtually the same. Uh, so your memory is going to be cheaper. The CPUs are, are still rather expensive. So yes, we'll overwrite the data. We'll just check the temps real quick. So uh, we see here that uh, the package got up to 70 degrees. So that's not bad at all. And uh, it even says here that the CPU temperature, where, where is that? Or is it a VID? Is it a core? The cores, yeah, one of them got to 70 degrees. So that's not bad at all. Really, really quite good. So um, in games, that uh, will, with the same video card in it, uh, here I'm showing it up on the screen. I think it was like, just about 400 watts and in time spy this was almost near five so it's about a hundred watt difference so it's not even that much less efficient i mean it is less efficient but uh you know by uh, a fifth but that's that's not too too bad so let's get on to my web pages that i brought up all i'm proud of them my web pages i always have nice web pages don't i this is the motherboard website and it's crap i just put it up here to prove that it's crap because it doesn't show anything about this thing. It's like, there's no, you know, talk about the, the power delivery, the power phases, you know, much of anything on the specs page. That's why if we move down to do, boop, boop, boop. There we go. And Antec, my old friend, in an article from uh, February of tw 2012, this platform came out. Would have been extremely expensive then. And, you know, you would have only been putting Core i7s on this until some later BIOS up revisions allowed for the Xeons to, to be put up on here. But imagine Intel had Ryzen performance all the way back in 2012, and they were just keeping that, you know, for their, their servers, which makes sense. But we live in a, a new age here five years later when things are just banane and it's just, it's like crazy fun. But what I'm bringing this webpage up for specifically is 22 phase power delivery. I was, I was wrong, I said 20, it's 22. With the Gatling gun that's protecting it. Now, that phase count is going to mean that it's it, it's not going to run that hot. So you got nice power delivery. It's it's very very good. And this doesn't have any crazy chipset fans or anything. Just bullets. That's all you need for cooling. So yeah, moving on. This is um, CPUupgrade.com, and this lists all the motherboards that are compatible with certain C, uh, CPUs. So we see the Intel Xeon E5-2680, uh, which is a 12 core processor, is still compatible with this motherboard. So if you can find that you can find the motherboard combine them you're talking like intel like 7900 performance uh you know give or take a couple cores give or take you know some ipc and probably a lot of efficiency on a platform that's five years old that you can get relatively inexpensive uh, memory for and it's still got things like usb 3.0 it's still got a billion sata headers you're gonna miss out on m.2 support and stuff like that but you know it all depends on what your flavor of the week is okay and yes ryzen's a better deal you know because it's new and it's going to last for longer and it'll be relevant for longer and yes it has ddr4 memory but that's very expensive right now so there's all kinds of pros and cons but i was i literally wasn't sold on this i i, I initially plugged it in with an air cooler on it and i was getting like 4.4 gigahertz and you know i wasn't really too impressed but once i started playing the game benchmarks which we'll see in a second that's where things really picked up so if you want to go on ebay you could pick up uh, a xeon e26 that's a 12 core processor for 380 us dollars so that's a that's a crazy good value i, I would go as far as to say that's like 
the the second Threadripper, the 1920 or whatever. That's about that performance for like half the price. So I'm considering this as maybe a daily, you know, a driver PC. I'm going to need a couple PCs coming up. I'm moving into an office, actually, uh, studio for the set. So I'm going to need a PC at home. I'm thinking of maybe adopting this platform. It's pretty cool. So, you know, they do sell these on AliExpress in various flavors and various prices. But we see here, uh, I wanted to find the one that I had. I think it's right here. No, this is still the 12 core. It's only 200 bucks on here or 10 core. Sorry. So there's options. Uh, this because there's a lot of different Xeons. This specific one wasn't on AliExpress, but uh, I would I would say you could probably pick it up for $180 or an eight core in that in that price range. That'll overclock on this platform, which is pretty cool. So the motherboards is what's gonna get you. I understand that. So you think X58 motherboards are still expensive? These things are brand new. You, you could pick up an X299 motherboard for the same price, and I'm not gonna fool you on that. We see here that if we're looking for a good one, like there's a saber tooth up here, it's going for 147.50. There's a day left in the auction, it'll jump up to 300. dollars So let's go down here. Uh, you know, there's the, a lot of these motherboards. Uh, here's an ASRock Intel X79 motherboards, 200. dollars Like the the good ones go for like crazy high expensive, and then you gotta watch you're not getting these Chinese ones. There's some Chinese ones that will not overclock a CPU like this, you know, or they will, but you're never going to get the performance that this motherboard does. So it's pretty damn ridiculous. So uh, here, let's go on to some game benchmarks uh, with a little bit of music or something. I just did four benchmarks so I could compare the uh, Ryzen uh, performance over this because I actually found out, pleasantly surprised, this platform, even though the IPC is lower in Cinebench and what have you, in games, it kicks the ass of the Ryzen, even though this is the brand newest platform with DDR4. Kick it, Timmy Joe! that I just, you know, I wasn't going to do a million benchmarks. I'm running the 1080 Ti at super max. It's running at about uh, 2,050 megahertz with a 6,100 uh, megahertz effective memory. Uh, it, it, it's just blowing the... So there's no GPU bottleneck. And I ran 1080p uh, benchmarks uh, in any of all those benchmarks. And you see, there's a margin for the Intel platform still, proving this far that optimization goes a long way. And when you have the big pockets in the you know platform that's been out for five years, uh, longer than the Ryzen has, or even longer, that the IPC is still here in a Xeon processor to beat out its eight-core brethren, even though... And some multi-core, you know, some Cinebench and, you know, some rendering and stuff like that. I think the Ryzen would take the cake. So, what about Fire Strike and Time Spy? Because those things are important. Well, there's the NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti and the Xeon E5-1680 version 2. And it gets a 1040... Well, 10,419, and the graphics score is 10,653, and the CPU score is 9,266. We see the CPU score is actually better on the Ryzen processor, but the graphics score is lower, which means this can actually get better results out of your video card than that can, which... Again, optimization. So moving on to, uh, here's Firestrike. That's the Xeon processor. It's getting a uh, 20,000, sorry, it's, it's getting a 30,000, 17, or 744. Fuck. 
<laughs> it's getting a, a 30,744 versus a physics score of 20,709. And then the Ryzen gets a little bit better physics score with a 22,000. But the overall score is lower for the Ryzen. This platform is better for gaming than Ryzen. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So, yes, this is going to be expensive. And for the same price, you could get a brand new platform. But if you're a smart consumer, if you're a smarty pants, and you go and you on eBay and you watch the deals for one of these motherboards, an ASRock, a, uh, you know, an Asus, uh, a Sabertooth, uh, this freaking thing with bullets on it, and you get it for, let's say, 200 250 bucks expensive for an old motherboard and you're getting a used product and you never know what goes along with that but then you go on uh, ebay and you happen to get a 10 core or an 8 core processor for let's say uh the price of a ryzen 1700 now all of a sudden you're looking at your ram your ram's way cheaper on this depending on how the way you go about it and you're on a platform that's still high end that's still got all the features the usbs and what have you lacking things like m.2 support but you can add that via one of these you know eight pcie or uh you know it's just there's lots of things you can do with this and it's still fairly relevant especially if you're a content creator and you like to game that's one of my biggest gripes and i always uh, kind of ran all my games on my benchmark or my, my test bench with my uh, intel platform with whatever video card i had lying around and left this for my stream box or you know for my video editing rig and i've been gaming on the ryzen lately and it hasn't been bad in fact it, it streams like beautifully and i you know with uh it's got a rx 580 in it it's been pretty good but i did remove this and put it in there and there is a small but noticeable uh you know advantage on team intel even on this older platform so i'm at watch timmy joe instagram and twitter i hope you enjoyed this little deep dive i was very fortunate to uh get sent this motherboard by a viewer named brandon he sent me a motherboard before this platform here uh, i'm going to be sending it back to him or who knows i might I, I just can't get over the bullets on this motherboard it's the coolest freaking nerdiest bullshit thing i've ever but it works for me i really like it a gatling gun it's just a little cool showpiece or i'm looking at that saber tooth motherboard on that ebay auction maybe if i can get it for a good price uh you'll be seeing more well maybe i'll buy the 10 or 12 core we'll see where she goes from there but i'm not watching me join instagram and twitter keeping in mind that a 10 core processor from intel is still like 800 dollars american a 12 core you're talking 1200 dollars american getting into this platform might be something you're worth looking into if you really like high core count and you still like high gaming performance now your mileage may vary this is a very high-end motherboard, and I have it overclocked very, very far. I'm fortunate 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz on just an AIO on a test bench. That's pretty cool, but it remains to be seen right here. It works, man. It's, it's definitely pretty cool, and I'm really glad to have played with the Bullet motherboard. I'm so freaking happy about it. So I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks, Brandon. Keep in mind, there is a, uh email, me at timmyjoe.com. If you have any cool hardware like Bullet motherboards, I would love to have a look at them. I don't always need to have them. I can just, you can send them. I can send them back to you with a t-shirt or something like that. Uh, also, uh, we are going to have lots of fun things in July. I'm working on some merch, okay? Got merch like a god church. I'm also uh, working on the next uh, iteration of crappy things people trying to sell noob plebs on the internet uh, because that was an overwhelming success. So thank you for all your submissions with that. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be a grand old time in July. All kinds of stuff like this. But X79, definitely worth looking into, especially if you can find one of these motherboards on the cheap. See you guys later. Thanks very much for watching. Tammy Joe! Don't forget to have a Patreon. Have a Patreon.